A while ago I made an attempt in a live stream to figure out a certain strategy. However, I decided against uploading any more footage on this, since it would give you ways to reach level 300, 400 and even, in optimal cases, more than 500. This would absolutely break the level record leaderboard. However, currently the leaderboard is in a state of chaos and pretty much anything goes. Given that the strategy meanwhile is also used by kill record runs, surprisingly, I assumed it would be level record runs, I decided to give it a go and show it off. To understand what happens here you need to know one thing. At level 20 and level 40 in the game you gain a 100% growth boost to help you jump the gap in these insane level requirements. Now, there is one slight issue with that, which is, when you pick up an experience gem, your current growth value is added into it, even if you level up. You might notice where this is going, but I would say let's just look at the livestream and see what I did back then. So let's take Rune Tracer, let's get one little tiny... Okay, there's one level up. Now we are negative growth, right? The expectation right now is that we don't get another level up. If that happens, I'm really sad. It works! <laughs> it works! Well, and there you go. So this was pretty much on the 1st of April, which is kind of funny to release it there, or to try it out there. But um, yeah, as I said, I'm quite surprised that Kill Record Runs used this, and this is just a guide. I don't want to do this here, I don't want to show off exactly everything, I want to put the idea out on how this properly works, since my highest level was 381. And then you can give it a go, and you can respond and say what level you achieved. So for this entire thing to work, I'm not gonna reset until I get a perfect run. I'll just roughly show what the entire idea is. As I mentioned in the very beginning of the video, or rather I had it written down, I am currently using a modded version of the game. I'm using the debug mode, which allows me to do fans... You gotta be kidding me. Funny enough that it's actually a horrible weapon, so I don't want to have that. It allows me to do some fancy stuff like this, woo, woo, which is obviously amazing if I need to show off certain things that don't happen on your screen, but outside of your screen. But the entire game will be exactly how it would be if you wouldn't play with debug mode. The only difference is that we can actually take a look at it, and that's quite good if you make a guide. So if you didn't understand so far what's really going on, at level 20 and level 40 we gain plus 100% bonus growth. If you pick up a gem to the entire gem, no matter how much experience it has, this bonus growth is applied. So how do you get a big ginormous gem? Well, once there is around 400 to 500 gems on your screen, the game will start accumulating all the experience into one gem. That gem is the one that is the furthest away from you. The game does this to have lag prevention, otherwise you would just get flooded with an endless amount of gems, but for us we will use that to go a bit crazy. So at one point I will just stand still, no longer move and just let the red gem accumulate. Another thing that is very important just to begin with, like if you get on the stage, look for 4 empty tomes. If you don't get 4 empty tomes just reset until you get 4. To compensate for the one lost level I will just give myself a normal chest. And it's really important since your goal is to stop at level 20 or at level 40. Both are possible, however both use very different builds, I'm not gonna give them away since where's the fun if you don't get to try out anything on your own. But I will give you one tip, use Firachi, okay? There's pretty much nothing better in the game to kill masses of enemies. Now why would you go for level 20 and not level 40 if both give the same bonus, right? Well, most of the enemies in the game scale with your level. That means it takes twice as long to kill the enemies at level 40 than it does to kill them at level 20. Some of them have static health like the witches, but we don't care about that too much since the witches give very little experience in comparison to the waves that we care about the most. Alright. I got the last empty tome and now just to pretend that there were four, just to make it as a real case, I'll give myself a chest of a random weapon. It doesn't matter since I will max out everything that I have either way. Now this is obviously a strategy that relies heavily on resetting, getting the right weapons and that everything works out perfectly. This is not a thing that you just do once or twice or three times and expect that you hit level 400. In the early levels you want to look for all the weapons or all the passive weapons that you decided will be the best to do this. 
Now to understand why the wave 28 and 29 is so important, let's take a look at experience. Most enemies in the game, aside from bosses, give 1 to 3 experience. There are even some that give 0.5 I think. But yes, the point is it's very little. However, the Medusa at wave 28, that is actually the flying school, I don't know why it's called Medusa, in the game files, gives you 30 experience. That is 10 times as much as the second highest amount. And the wave 29, all of them give you 30 experience. They also spawn in masses, which is just absolutely bonkers. On wave 28, there are also witches that spawn, but they only give, I think, 1.5 or 2 or 3 experience, so it's a lot less. And the great part is, all of these enemies, they scale with your level. So the lower you are, the easier it will be to kill them. Now, you don't have to be on level 20 or level 40 when you get to that point. You can be a bit lower and just pick up some experience around you. However, now you need to understand how the red gem works. So, when the red gem is generated, it just picks up all the experience on the map and it pretty much traces you. It slowly flies towards you or picks up gem by gem by gem. Don't worry, we'll take a look at this in a second. And then it will just stop the moment it gets towards your screen. You will never see this as long as there's experience outside of your vision range. So just to zoom out a bit and we will see the red gem right now is in the bottom left corner. For some reason these always end up in the corner. Now they are always the furthest one away that it can reach and I just assume diagonal right is the furthest away. But this is very simple to know where your main gem is. A slight tip. When you are at wave 29 and the red death is about to spawn to kill you have a freeze around. Freeze him. This will give you enough time to go to the left side, check for the red gem and if it's not there to run to the other side and pick it up. Now one thing that is a bit important. Since you are very limited with your level ups, you do have to take some experience and especially chests. However, watch what happens when I pick up this gem over here. Just one. Okay, I'll pick it up and I'll zoom out a bit. There we go. And as you can see over here at the top right, a new red gem appeared. This will happen every single time the game consolidates the experience into red gem and then you pick up a new gem. Where's the next one? I actually don't see it. Oh, do you see it down there on the bottom right? It's really hard to see it, but it sticks out behind the bookshelf. Yes, so every single time you pick up experience, exactly this happens and... Where's the new one? Alright, so unless I miss it, the gem that is now created where all the experience is in is one of these three gems depending on which one is the furthest. Since I went towards the left side it can only be one on the right side. And since this one was chosen after this one it means this one is the furthest away. That is pretty much how it works in the game. Now this doesn't help you anything in the game right? If you think about it, if you do this live, if you do this in a run, what is this supposed to help you? Pretty much nothing. However, there is a way to force this. Also, if you have to banish, then just restart. It's a waste of an entire level. I will get into the forcing in a second once we reach level 39. For now, I will just freely level up and pick up all the chests, just like you would in a normal game. Yes, you still want to reach that level, so just do it ASAP. I was just moving around and doing stuff to explain. Try to focus on the guns whenever you don't have anything else that is new that you want to have. And also avoid maxing them out before the other one is maxed out. Whenever you pick up a chest it will check for what items you have and if one weapon is already maxed out then it's just less likely that you'll get one. Empty Tome is always amazing to get but I will go for the guns since we are quite limited on level ups as I said. Alright, I will make another banish just again to show this off and to compensate for the banishes that I used I will give myself two level 1 chests. If this would happen to you, then you would just have to restart, it's that simple. There's Tiragisu, amazing. And I would recommend trying to max out the weapons over the passive weapons, unless the passive weapons are insanely good for Ferracci. Ferracci is by far the most important thing about this build. Another Tiragisu, very important to have an additional laser. Now with 3 levels more, my goal is to max out the guns. At 10 minutes a chest will drop and I want to have that chest to evolve to Ferracci. The rest will be evolved via random chests that drop over time. Over here is a freeze and down here is a freeze. This is pretty much a prime position to do this entire thing. I just want to give you a reminder that the build that I'm doing right now is not my recommendation. I'm not saying this is what you have to go for. 
All I'm saying is, Ferracci is very, very good. Insanely good. But maybe as a slight tip, you might want to use Crown. That, that one also really helps a lot. Another tip that I want to give you is just remove Magnet. I, I don't like using Magnet in these. Picking up experience pretty much messes you over, but more importantly, you might pick something else up that you don't want to pick up. Now that the guns are maxed out, you have to make a decision whether you want to go for level 40, which is a slight risk, or if you want to stay at level 39, to make sure that even if you pick up experience, everything will still be fine. I will just give myself a decent amount of experience, and now I will move over to the left side and stand still. So this is the position that I chose to be in, and let's look what happens to the gem once enough experience is around me and do you see what happens over there? Do you see how it's jumping around every single time an enemy dies? I actually lost track of it. Oh, down there it is. So this is what happens. Let me let me show this to you again. And this time I will walk a bit further. That's actually a really bad idea to do that right now. But yes, I will walk a bit further. And let's just take a look at what happens at the gem. Do you see how it just soaks up all the experience? How it jumps around? And then it ends at the XP gem that is the furthest away from you. So this time it actually did happen, it's at the bottom right here. Now if you paid attention to everything that is going on, you will have realized that there are some issues with the entire strategy. First of all, to pick up chests you will have to pick up experience gems, so every single time you have to create this gem again. Don't worry about this, don't care about it, just do it once at the end, once you have all the chests picked up. This is also why you kinda wanna stay on a bit lower level, like at the beginning of 39, so when you move around you don't start picking up so much experience that you might get forced to level 41. There's another chest and I will use that to evolve Ferracci. Ah, uh, fire wand, not bad. When you want to do this in a perfect way, there will be a ton of resetting. And sometimes it's misunderstood when I say a ton of resetting. When I say a ton of resetting, I mean several hundred times. At least if you want to have a really good run that exceeds 400 or even scratches 500. There can be resets for penta chests. At this point, we could have already had two penta chests if we got really lucky. There will be resets for arcana. Since right now I'm only looking for three different arcana, one of them is not as good as the other, which is Slash. And yeah, that's pretty much it. By the way, just moving around is already enough most of the times that the red gem will be generated in a new place. This pretty much just depends on where you move around and where the red gem is and la di da, too, too, much, too much detail, okay? Uh, point is, th there's a lot that will trigger a new red gem. So don't care about it too much at this point. Well, we did get one very, very amazing arcana. This one is also decent, but this one is more powerful. I will give you one final tip that is not part of the actual guide. It might be better to not pick up the chests when they drop. Also, a slight thing that you might need to know regarding the resets. Some enemies only have a chance to drop a chest. There was a bat that spawned at minute 12 and the bat died, but there's no chest. Yeah, it was just a chance and there's none. So if you want to have an optimal run, you want to have a chest from that enemy. The reason why I don't pick up the chest right now, by the way, is because I can't evolve anything either way. So I need at least two chests to evolve something. And it's just not worth it to walk through experience twice to pick up one useless chest. Ah, uh, doesn't this look amazing? Just look at this. The moment they spawn, they just instantly die. And now imagine this was flooded with enemies, later at the good waves, and they just melt, they just die. Given on level 40 it's by far not as extreme as it will be on level 20, but, but hey, I mean this is still amazing, isn't it? Now since I don't have a lot of experience, and I also know how to deal with that if I get close to the 40th level mark, I will show you how to accumulate all the red gems into one. It's actually a lot easier than you think. So right now a boss spawns, and I want to use this time where I would go over there to the boss either way. Um, right now I wouldn't know where he is, right? So I just wait until he drops a chest. Alright, there's the chest, this is where we would move around. And as you can see there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... I, down there's one, seven red gems. That is horrible. So to accumulate them, you simply have to walk out of vision range. Let's just quickly get the chest. Oh, amazing, I didn't even know that. Uh, that was good. Yeah, now we walk out of vision range and keep track of what happens to the gems. Do you see that? Behind us. They are all being soaked up since there's so much experience on the floor. 
And now you can count the red gems that you see on the floor. There's one problem with Leda, and there's a bug where experience just keeps flying towards him. You have to pay attention or you just mark your experience. Right now I collected one, and I'm pretty sure this might have created a new red gem. Let me see. Okay, we might have actually not collected the experience gem, but the point is, right now it's over there and it's consolidated. You will always have a 1 in 4 where the final red experience gem will be, but it's always at a corner. I say 1 in 4 because the enemies later on will drop red experience gems, so it's really confusing which one is the one of you. However, as long as you're maxed out and you don't pick up experience, this is more than fine, since even the red experience gems that the good enemies drop, the wave 28-29, it will also just get accumulated into this one gem. Okay, I just heard again that I was collecting experience with Leda that was still flying. You see how only one gem is left. It looks like that actually doesn't affect the red gem that spawns. That is good for me, I didn't actually know that. I thought it would always create a new one. So as long as you don't move, you're safe that no new red gem will be created. Alright, now we finally have five chests on the floor. One of them, as I said, is the arcana, so let's just pick up everything. This is the last point where you might reset if you don't get what you need. Well, that's amazing, isn't it? By far the best one that you can get here is the one that causes Hellfire to explode. It's insanely good. In this case, there's not really a good choice. This will cause the death spiral to bounce once and this will give it a chance at critical strikes. So I will just go for slash. Ooh, do you have a penta chest for me? Do you see how easy that was on level 40? Yeah, that, that is usually a hardcore boss. So this one I can just pick up, there is no experience either way. But it doesn't help, I, I need one more. Well, there we go, and now it's time to get into the final position. Let me just get the hellfire. Oh, imagine you were exploding now, this would be amazing. And I have to walk over to get into position. Don't pick up a red gem now. This is the worst point to do this. Okay, so over here, this is actually quite a risky pickup for the freeze. So I will just use the zoom mode that I have over here and use only one. In your case, in an optimal case, you have two freezes. So you can pick up this one, you check to the left side, you see if there is a red gem or not. And if there's none, then you just walk to the right side. The biggest trouble that people go through when they do this is they want to pick up the red gem on the map, but it creates a ton of red gems while they move. So just for reference right now what I did here, you can see on the bottom left there's only one red gem. There is no other red gem right now on the map. That means if no other enemy is around anymore, for example at 30 minutes, then I can just pick up that red gem. There's nothing that can go wrong anymore. And fear not, you don't have to fear to die, you have 6 revives. And it doesn't matter if you lose them later on down the line when Red Death spawns, since you don't try to kill him, right? So it doesn't matter if they get lost. But do you see this right now? This is how Farachi shreds through them. It's by far not as amazing as it would be if you had the Hellfire with the explosions and if you were only level 20. Like, it's not even remotely close. Do this at level 20 and just check it out. They melt. Their health at level 20 is only 100 without curse. 100. That is two hits. Of let, me, let me just show you, okay? Let me just show you. Firachi right now deals around 50 to 60 damage. That is only two hits of Firachi, and if you follow a beam, you will see the beam attacks around 10 times a second. It's, it's not that much since it turns, but it tries to hit 10 times a second. That means if they were on this health, you would get a buttload of kills. This would jump up in hundreds up here. So yeah, ju ju just food for thought, you know. And there we go. We are hitting 2959. And what I'll do now is I'll make myself invulnerable just to zoom out again and that we can look at everything. So you can see the red gem is still over there. Nothing changed with that. And now we would pick up the freeze. I'll just do that. He's frozen right now. The red gem is still there. No new red gem will be created since no enemies are dying. We are moving over here. We are still level 40. And let the fun begin. I will link a video of KJ who did a run on 0.5.0e and without saying that the run itself was bad what he did, it got really unlucky. So yeah, that is a level 312 that got really unlucky. That is, um, yeah.
And that is it. Was this run realistic? Yeah, absolutely. Anyone can repeat this. Was this run the best one that you can do? By far not. It was horrible. If you do this right, you can easily exceed level 300, 400 and even scratch 500. Enjoy!